and the Lord God made a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put a man whom he had made. And out of the earth the Lord made every tree to come, delight in the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve were without clothing and had no sense of shame. Adam, come here. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now the snake was wiser than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Hey, Eve. Hello. Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree, that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not die. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she took the fruit and gave it to her husband. And their eyes were opened, that they were naked, and they made themselves clothes. <laughs> I'm naked. And they heard the voice of the Lord God in the garden, and Adam and his wife hid themselves among the trees of the garden. Where are you? I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree. What have you done? The serpent tricked me. <laughs> you are now banished from the garden. Go! Well, that's the story for human origins that most people who follow the Abrahamic religions still subscribe to. Whereas my previous video in this series covered how the Homo genus evolved over the past 2 million years that includes our species Homo sapiens sapiens that appeared in Africa at least 220,000 years ago and probably much earlier than that which nevertheless remained firmly stuck in Africa until approximately 75,000 years ago when something changed. So the Abrahamic creation myth states that the first human, Adam, ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and apparently then became self-aware. A bit like a child growing up. Well, ironically, something did change 75,000 years ago but it did not involve a talking snake or a magic tree. Something changed when a relatively physically weak Homo sapien, as compared against the likes of Homo neanderthals, that had a similar sized brain or the even more ancient Homo erectus, something changed that finally allowed Homo sapien to successfully start waves of migration out of Africa that continue to this very day. What was it that changed everything? The big idea or revelation that would literally turn a physical weakling into the most powerful and destructive human species on the planet that would literally go on a rampage right across the globe triggering mass extinction of not just all other human species but many hundreds of thousands of animals and plant species the Earth's sixth mass extinction event, all in the blink of an eye in evolutionary terms. That change was for humans to imagine to be real that which does not exist as the solution to the problem that big-brained hominid species faced, namely how to cope with death. Whilst Homo sapiens of 75,000 years ago clearly would not have been the first to have pondered the implications of death, fear of the unknown and unexplained, However, some 75,000 years, years ago, an idea was planted in, in humanity that would change everything. 
and that idea was of powerful spirits that were watching over humans, guiding and protecting them throughout their lives with signs and portents, and most importantly, to deal with the ultimate fear, with the promise that death was not final for all those who obediently followed the spirit guides who were in communications with the afterlife, literally following the guides, messengers or prophets to the ends of the world where unquestioning obedience would be rewarded by being able to join the powerful spirits in an eternal afterlife and thus man found a way to defeat death. And so cultures centered around the spirit world exploded onto the scene that went far far beyond the ancestor worship of past human species but now probably with initially just a single individual the first prophet changed everything. The power of the idea to imagine spirits and deities as being real who actively watched over whole groups of humans who were destined to follow the path set forth for them where the reward would be eternal life in the spirit world where every bad natural event such as storm, storms, droughts and plagues were taken as a signs of anger from the spirits for deviating from the true path as set forth for them as explained by their messengers and so humankind invented an infinite number of deities that over time would become ever more powerful as growing tribes competed with one another for ever greater number of powerful gods all the way to that of the all-powerful, almighty, one God. The consequences of this was to subdue hunter-gatherer individualism as our species became ever more tightly bound in highly cooperative collectives of ever-expanding numbers that went far beyond the family groupings of that of the other human species and archaic Homo sapiens, but whole tribes of humans bonded together through religious belief under the protection and in the service of their gods which transformed the physically weak Homo sapiens into a truly formidable entity. Groups of humans led by the gods messengers that sought to please their deities so as to make prophecies become manifest and so the earth heard ever louder mantras of servitude towards the higher beings that they hoped to join after death. And so now humans will no longer fear the unknown, the relentless long march into the wilderness, for when as God's chosen people it had always been ordained to be so, why fear other animals and other human species and even tribes when we had the power of God's on our side to guide and protect us and then usher us into an eternal afterlife, an Elysium. So why would the change have taken place in a single individual? Well, one only needs to look at recorded history of the past few thousand years to see that it is littered with individuals said to be prophets who changed everything during their lifetimes with their stories rippling out for many centuries beyond their times and for some even to this very day as each iteration of the stories was adapted for the next messiah to profit from. Then the next and the next after that, that as every era, every population had their prophets and messiahs of the day who with absolute certainty were themselves convinced and more importantly were easily able to convince others to follow them as gods were on their side, followers of whom were said would cheat death as life was merely temporary ahead of an eternal life that awaits all that pass the test of following the one true path, while severe punishment awaits all others. This is the mantra that has echoed throughout time to this very day. 
one of lack of free will and slavery in the service of the elite and then for the masses to welcome being cannon fodder in the wars of competing religious elites for eternal rewards after death. Hearing voices, that is what 1% of people tend to experience during their lifetime, all without having to gulp down substances such as the milk of the poppy or any one of a myriad of mind-bending substances. Hearing voices in their heads to tell them to do X, Y or Z. Telling them that their lives have special purpose, that they are doing God's work. Today in the West at least, we call it schizophrenia. But for the whole of human history, it was seen as highly convincing communications with the spirit world. People who were deemed to be literally in divine communications, having messages passed down to the tribe that they were special and that their messenger had been granted divine powers themselves, the ability to cheat death, and so was the case with every human tribe. And schizophrenia is just one of many triggering mechanisms for one being touched by spirits, even gods. And again, in recorded history, we see countless examples, such as the effect of near-death experiences, Fevers went ill, interpreting natural events such as lightning and even a sudden gust of wind, let alone the more violent manifestations of nature such as tornadoes, tsunamis, earthquakes and volcanoes, all of which were perceived in terms of signs of the actions of a higher power and this apart from the deliberate drug-induced group experiences. Therefore, Homo sapiens by 75,000 years ago were primed through natural selection to have started to imagine that that which does not exist to be as real as they were, with prophets appearing as the messengers of the spirit world who were proclaimed as having godlike powers themselves, the effect of which was to strongly bond groups together all in a single purpose or cause that promised protection in this life and guaranteed an afterlife, peoples passing on their revelations and beliefs to others and future generations which for tens of thousands of years was through song and dance that over time was supplemented by symbols and objects such as cave paintings and carved figures out of wood and bone, objects that would attain mystical powers as they were passed on from generation to generation to generation that were perceived as offering protection to the individual and group as well as acting to bond encounters with new groups who likely shared similar beliefs and symbols with prophets and messiahs making appearances in every generation from the pool of at least 1% who tended to hear voices in their heads and along with the passage of time convincing the masses to build ever more elaborate and time consuming monuments which acted to reinforce the power of the gods and the merging of the spirit world with the real world. And so recorded human history of the past 5000 years or so barely scratches the surface of those who came before spanning at least 75,000 years, beliefs reiterated by many thousands of now deceased and lost civilizations, fine tuning of the ideologies, all reinforcing and ingraining into humanity the power of divine intervention and the purpose of human existence via their messengers on earth, gods and religions, reinforcement of beliefs over tens of thousands of years. Whilst those few were born skeptical of irrational beliefs, perhaps another 1%, would either need to learn to adapt by keeping their mouths shut and play along with the masses or be expelled and probably in most cases killed as heretics, which ensured that there really was only one dominant Homo sapiens species and that species was and is today homo sapien religious. 
which is what I will continue with in my next video. This video series is based on the following two articles published at the Market Oracle website. Ensure you're subscribed for future updates in this series and click the link to the next episode.